What's going on guys? It's Troy Dan here. And today, we've got 10 minutes of WWE facts you don't know. Kind of curious if I don't know these facts, but uh, I'll tell you a wrestling fact. The Undertaker? Not actually dead. Boom! You heard it here first. Three, two, one, go. Do you know why WWE always has the good guys on the left side of the ring during tag team matches? The reason is so viewers can see the emotions on the wrestlers faces. Oh, I never noticed that. Psychologically, people can better connect with someone when they can see their expressions. I never noticed that. Did you that. know, when a WWE wrestler wins money in the bank, they have to carry the briefcase with them everywhere they go, even when they aren't at shows. The reason for this is so that the wrestler can have the briefcase with them when they do media appearances. When CM Punk won the money in the bank, he actually started carrying his gear in the briefcase. Did okay. you know? There's actually two to three versions of every championship in WWE. Each belt has one version that's only used on TV. It's purposely only used at televised events to prevent it from getting worn out and looking bad. There's also a second version of every WWE title belt that the champion carries with them wherever they go. Wrestlers will use this belt at autograph signings, media appearances, and even non-televised shows. For some championships, they also have a third version that's kept at WWE's headquarters in Sanford, Connecticut. This I did not know that, but that makes sense though. You don't, you don't want to lose the title. This one is used for photo shoots and media. Another reason WWE always has two versions of every belt is so that if one gets lost, they will always have a backup. Exactly. Did you know? During a match between Big John Studd and Andre the Giant, Andre fell asleep. Big John what? Studd locked Andre in a front face lock and held it for about eight and a half minutes as he tried to wake his opponent. Apparently, Andre would sometimes fall asleep during matches due to a combination of drinking and travel fatigue. Oh God! Did you know? In Chris Jericho's first ever wrestling match, his name is spelt wrong. The company he was working for forgot to include the H in Jericho. <laughs> also, Y2J was originally a cowboy from Casper, Wyoming. Jericho hated the character and abandoned it soon after his first match. Didn't know that. Did you know? The Shield was originally going to be Daniel Bryan, Big Show, and CM Punk. I knew that. WWE wanted to give CM Punk some henchmen to protect him, since Punk was supposed to be a cowardly bad guy. Punk didn't like the idea and suggested he use guys who had never been seen by the fans before. It ultimately turned into the Shield we all know, and in the storyline, the Shield is being paid by CM Punk and Paul Heyman to help Punk retain his WWE Championship. Did you know that when he was an active wrestler, WWE Hall of Famer Scott Hall, or Razor Ramon, refused to sign an autograph for a kid with cancer? Wait, I heard about this! I heard about it, it wasn't- hold on, what? Here's the full explanation. But these guys came to me with a camera crew and stuff, and the, the little kid was not present. I just don't want to be a part of this whole thing. Like, oh. Yeah, and I didn't feel good. My defibrillator had fired early that earlier that day. Did you know? The Undertaker hates cucumbers. It's hard to believe, considering his nickname is The Dead Man, but Undertaker simply can't stand them. One time, while at a restaurant, The Undertaker threw up because there was a cucumber in his drink. Does he not like cucumbers because of a activity that may have happened? Never mind. In the bedroom? No. The Phenom's that. fellow wrestlers would also play prank That's why I don't like him. by putting cucumbers in his boots and hat. The strange part is that no one really seems to know why The Undertaker hates cucumbers so much. According to The Undertaker's manager, Paul Bearer, Undertaker's mother made him eat cucumbers when he was a kid, when The Undertaker didn't want to. Cucumber. Uh, okay, alright. Yeah, I hate cucumbers. Could be a dark story. <laughs> Uh -huh. Did you know, Jeff Hardy had his very first WWE match in 1994 against Razor Ramon. However, Hardy hated the match so much, he didn't want to wrestle anymore after it was <laughs> over. Two days later, Hardy had another match, this time with the 123 Kid, or X-Pac. He felt much better after that, and decided to keep on wrestling. Jeff Hardy eventually got signed by WWE, and became a decorated champion. Did you know? During her training at the WWE Performance Center, Sasha Banks came up with her boss character. The character is inspired by her cousin, Snoop Dogg. However, when she started using it, all the trainers and coaches hated it. Except for one. Dusty Rhodes loved the boss oh, character Dusty. and told Sasha to keep using it. Yo, yo, yo. If Dusty hadn't been so positive, imagine where Sasha Banks' career would- Hold on. Is Cody Rhodes in the WWE now? What's going on with that? Is that, is that a work? Someone tell me. Have gone. Did it work? Did you know? It's really hard to earn Brock Lesnar's respect. Seth Rollins has wrestled Lesnar multiple times, but it took years before the Drift God was respected by the Beast Incarnate. After the WrestleMania 35 match, Seth brought a pack of beer to Brock Lesnar's locker room. The two drank together and were able to connect on a personal level. According to Rollins, this is the moment that he earned Brock Lesnar's respect. Get him drunk. Did you know? Shortly after the, the Shield same way. in 2012, they attacked Randy Orton after the Viper had a match. There was no rehearsal 
Shield, so Orin was caught by surprise and became legitimately angry. <laughs> he thought the Shield was trying to hurt him for real, and vented his frustration backstage, and was specifically mad at Dean Ambrose. After Orton had walked away, Triple H then told the Shield not to worry about it. Did you know, oh. before joining WWE- Did you know this guy's audio is different every time he says something? Come on, dude! Compressor, use- Jesus! Alundra Blaze, or Medusa, Here's... was homeless and living on the streets. She also owed the IRS $80,000. However, Vince McMahon got in touch with Alundra and offered her a WWE contract. McMahon also asked her if there was anything else he could do for her. The future WWE Hall of Famer mentioned her debt, and the next day, Vince McMahon sent her a check for $80,000. Dude, Vin The Vin sad part is, about two years later, yeah. Alundra Blaze would join WWE's competitor, WCW, and drop the Women's Championship in the trash on live TV. Did you know? Dude, Vince did that for Ric Flair, too. He had a bunch of debt, and he paid it off. Vince, maybe he's a good dude. 2003, Bobby Lashley was in a bank when a robbery broke out. Unfortunately, <laughs> a bullet grazed Lashley, and his knee was injured. Oh, Bobby shit. Bobby Lashley was in the middle of training for the Olympics when this happened, but his dreams of competing were shattered huh. after the injury. I not know that. recovering, WWE reached out and offered Bobby an opportunity to wrestle for them. Wow. Bobby Lashley took them up on their offer, and 18 years later, he became a WWE champion. 18 years? Did you know, took every time she wrestles, Lacey Evans always has a letter from a fan in one of her boots. These letters are usually very inspiring stories, like a fan who is motivated by Lacey Evans to fight drug addiction. Evans keeps letters like these to help remind herself of the impact she can have on someone's life. Can I put some letters in my boot? I got some letters some kids sent me. No. Did you know, when the New Day first started, they were supposed to be good guys. The fans weren't into the group, and Xavier Woods thought they should become villains. He pitched the idea to Vince McMahon, who was skeptical and didn't think it would work. The New Day Woods then said at first. if he couldn't get the fans to hate them in four weeks, McMahon could fire him. Vince McMahon agreed to the deal, and thankfully, Xavier Woods was successful, and the New Day became the most hated group on the WWE roster. Did you know, since returning to WWE in 2018, Bobby Lashley has not made any appearances on SmackDown. The closest Lashley ever got to being on the show was in 2019, when SmackDown aired a video the Almighty posted on his Twitter account. The last time Bobby Lashley physically appeared on SmackDown was in 2007. Didn't know that! Did you know, in 2011, Mark Henry was told to go out to the ring and wrestle a match against Sin Cara. However, Sin Cara never came out, and the entire thing was a prank pulled on Mark Henry. <laughs> Henry felt disrespected and became so mad that he was going to quit WWE. <laughs> Vince McMahon later apologized, but thought that the anger Mark Henry experienced would make for a great character. This then created the <laughs> Hall of Pain storyline that eventually led to Henry becoming World Heavyweight Wait, that champion. was a shoot? Did you know, Boogeyman wasn't going to eat worms. Martin Wright, the man who played the Boogeyman character, wanted to eat bugs like cockroaches, maggots, crickets, and more. However, the arenas WWE hosted their shows at were afraid that the bugs would get loose and cause an infestation. They decided huh. just to have the Boogeyman eat worms since WWE could control that. Did you know, even though John Cena is his real name, WWE still owns it. This means when John Cena is credited in a movie, WWE gets a cut of the profits. The reason what? why WWE can do this is because they own the intellectual property right on the name John Cena. When asked in 2006 if this bothers him, John Cena said, Absolutely not. Before this, I was a kid in a small Massachusetts town uh, mowing lawns for a golf huh. course. I don't mind kicking a percentage of my, uh, my earnings to the person who gave me a chance and an opportunity. Did you know, Jinder Mahal won the WWE Championship in 2017. His home province of Alberta, Canada was so excited that they acknowledged Mahal- He's Canadian? No, he's from Dubai! Huh? Mahal's victory what? during the government's legislative assembly you know and even mentioned the Don't Hinder Gender meme. Second one, Don't Hinder Gender, sorry, this document from the Calgary Herald, Don't Hinder Gender Mahal. Did you know, not a single person has ever kicked out of Baron Corbin's finisher, End of Days. When asked if Corbin would rather win the WWE Championship or never have anyone kick out of his finisher, Baron Corbin said this. Let's say I have a 12 year career and no one's ever kicked out of End of Days. Like that's something that would be talked about longer than championships, I believe. So I think I have to go with no one ever kicking out of End of Days. I didn't know that. Did you know, in 2006, Triple H and Shawn Michaels were part of a backstage segment where they made fun of John Laurinaitis. Direct from John Laurinaitis. That's right. And you guys are in direct violation. Fans wouldn't see John Laurinaitis or hear him talk until 2011, meaning they wouldn't have gotten this joke until five years after DX made it. 
Huh. Did you know? Bray Wyatt had a character that we never got to see. In 2011, after spending about a year on the main roster as Husky Harris, Wyatt was sent back to WWE's development system, FCW. Husky he Harris? He created a new persona and came up with a character named Axel Mulligan. Wyatt wore a mask inspired by the heavy metal band Slipknot, and Mulligan was a reference to Bray's grandfather, Blackjack Mulligan. Axel Mulligan's finisher was also a stunner, oh, but he geez. only wrestled two matches as this character, both of which were not televised. Wyatt would eventually become Bray Wyatt, but eight years later, Later, he created a new mass persona called the fiend. Yeah, what happened? Well, where is this dude? Is he coming back? Where is he going? I haven't heard of Bray Wyatt. He was doing great with the, the fiend gimmick. Did you know, before they were signed by WWE, Jeff and Matt Hardy would be paid $150 well, per match. However, the Italian Stallion, the man who trained Jeff and Matt, took $100 as a booking <laughs> fee. This left the Hardys with only $50 after every match. On top of that, Scam. Jeff and Matt also had to pay for their own travel expenses. Scam. There was also an incident where the Italian Stallion abandoned the Hardys and left them stranded when they were supposed to travel to a show. After that, the Hardys told WWE to call them directly if they ever wanted to use either Jeff or Matt. Not only did WWE do that, but they eventually offered the brothers full-time contracts, and the Hardys didn't have to give the Stallion a single penny. Did you know, back when Randy Orton was a teenager, he was a fan of Goldberg. The Viper was such a big fan that when he turned 18, he wanted to get Goldberg's iconic tattoo on his arm. Oh. The tattoo artist told the young Orton that it wasn't a good idea to copy another person's tattoo. Ultimately, huh. Randy Orton got a similar tattoo to Goldberg's that still looked different enough. As he got more popular, Randy Orton added more tattoos to make sure nobody thought he was wearing Goldberg's tattoo. Didn't know that. Did you? Oh, it's over? I didn't know that. I mean, some of these, I, yeah, these were good. Some of these I didn't know. Uh, some of them I did know, but most of them I did not. How many did you know? Ten minutes of facts. You did. Oh, I thought it was ten facts. I can't even read. Guys, if you got a video like for me to watch, react to, you can tweet me at TroyNet under the hashtag TroyNetReacts. Thank you for watching, and kids, it's not real.